Okay, hello, this is Dr. James, and today we're going to do an unboxing and testing of a water distillation unit. If you're concerned about uh, stuff in your drinking water, if you don't know how good the drinking water is, or you don't want fluorine in it, this device should take all that stuff out. Distilled water should be very pure. And um, so let's, let's get going. We'll start with an unboxing and assemble this thing, and we'll do some testing with it. And, See how it works. Should be interesting. Okay, hello, this is Dr. Janes, and today I'm going to talk about a water distiller. Now, um, I'm just going to do an unboxing today of this guy, but I uh, just wanted to mention um, there are competing technologies where uh, the distiller is going to boil the water. Um, there is, uh, I got, did another video on this a while back, and I'm probably going to do a science -y video a little bit later comparing uh, how much power these guys draw and the pluses and, and minuses of reverse osmosis. This is reverse osmosis, and it uses filters to filter, well, it basically has a membrane, and it works just like a cell. Forces, well, it works in the reverse of a cell. A cell will suck water in through the membrane. This forces it backwards through the membrane to separate salt out of the water or other contaminants. And uh, unlike that device over there, this one here just boils the water and then recondenses it, which will make it very pure. And uh, this one doesn't have uh, membranes that need to be replaced about once a year. That one does. But this is a much more energy intensive um, <coughs> process, but hopefully it's more robust since it doesn't have uh, these membranes which, which do wear out after a while. I mean everything wears out after a while, but um, the membranes really do only last about a year, and maybe this will last longer, who knows. In principle, this type of technology should be more robust, but cost more energy. Okay, here we go. We got the book here. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at what's inside of here, actually. I'll take a look at the book first. Oh, this is so exciting. Uh, troubleshooting. Not making full gallons. Operating instructions. Oh, look at that. Okay, so this, this should be very... Very interesting. So I assume the water boils in this guy and then it drips down into the other container once you condense it. So that's going to separate out a lot of stuff including like uh, fluorine because you don't want to be drinking a lot of fluorine. You know this for, for some reason this area here and probably a lot of places in the country give you lots and lots of water to wash your mouth out and spit out because you don't want to drink the fluorine but we don't have any water to drink because they poisoned it all by putting their crap in it okay so I'd like to have good drinking water that's not poisoned by the state gosh what is that it feels like it's glass looks like a glass funnel okay and what is this detergent Okay, so this is some kind of detergent to maybe clean the machine. Oh, looks like a handle. And maybe some kind of spout. Okay. And here is a plug. And let me take that top layer off here. Top layer, and we'll take that out of there. It's so beautiful, look at that. This actually seems pretty big. It's, here's my hand. So this is this is like as long as my arm. It's much bigger than that reverse osmosis machine that I have. Okay. Let's get the camera over here a little bit. I 
guess this is maybe the top of the device. Oh, it's got a fan up there for the condenser. Because, you know, when you heat the water up, it turns into a gas. The gas is called steam. And then it can float up through the air. And then if you cool it back down, you can turn that steam back into water. And it looks like this is a condenser up here. Looks like I see some kind of cooling fins inside of there, and this little spout right here where our water can come back out. Okay, and it looks like it plugs into the bottom part. So, let's take a look at the bottom part. Oh, it's probably like a giant uh, box out of here. Giant coffee maker or something. Top part. Come on. What the heck? Ugh. Oh, you know what? Looks like they jammed the uh, output tank, which is glass. This one's glass. They jammed it. Looks like it's got a rubber fitting on the bottom. This uh, top part here is kind of thin sheet metal, but it looks like it will probably do the job. It's, it's cloth. I don't know if it comes off. I assume it comes off. Oh yeah, looks like it comes off. Does it come off? Come on. Oh, there we go. You twist it. Okay. And this is glass. I know some of the cheaper ones said that these uh, receiver containers were made out of plastic and people were not very happy with that. I went with the middle of the road uh, costing um, a distiller because I wanted something that wasn't really cheap plastic, something that would maybe last a little bit longer. Looks like there's some kind of gasket in here, which is good because you don't want the steam to go out places other than the condenser, you're going to lose your water. Okay. So yeah, that's definitely stamped sheet metal. It's very... This is so thin, it can almost cut you. But I, I guess it's, you know... I guess it's thick enough. It seems to not be cutting me. But, you know... If I, if I would have designed this, I would have made that a little bit thicker. That is not beautiful. It's all shiny and beautiful. Turn this. Okay, so there's all the parts. So it looks like there's a plug down here for the condenser to plug into so it can get electricity from the bottom part. And this is probably the heater. Looks like a normal computer cord will go in there to power it. There's an on and off button here and uh, a reset. Yeah. Not sure what that's for. And here's the feet. And, uh, well, there we go. Very cool. Let me fill with this and see if I can figure out how to stick this guy together. Or you know what? i probably just figure it out with just... Oh, look at that. See, there's a gasket here at the, at the bottom of this guy. Let's just stick. Probably want this cord to be near where it's got to plug in down here, right? So we'll put the top on like so. Okay. Let's do that again. So see, there's a, there's a cord that comes out of this guy, and it's got to plug into down here. So probably I'll put it on like that, so that cord is near this pluggy guy where it goes. And we'll just try to go plugging that guy in down there. Okay. Let's see if he wants to seat that a little bit better. And here is our computer type plug. Looks like a standard computer power supply type plug goes into 
the other part of the machine. So I guess here our computer plug goes in like down there. Okay. Oh, this is very cool, huh? And looks like that guy just drips into there like that. Wow. There we go. And there are some other parts here. Maybe this spout thing. We have this spout thing here. I'm going to assume that this goes on our output guy here. Does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't fit there. Mm, I'm going to have to read the directions maybe and figure out where this thing goes. Maybe there's, oh, wait, there's two parts to it. Oh. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe that just covers it up or something, and then, oh, that doesn't make any sense. I guess I'll have to break down and read the directions and see, see what the heck this thing is for. Okay, and there's also this mysterious glass funnel thing. Let's open that guy up. And I'm a little bit concerned here, well, confused, I wouldn't say concerned. It looks like they stuffed some padding maybe in there. Or, oh, wait, wait, you know what this is? Oh, I was going to say, because that wasn't very good for padding, but there's some kind of grainy stuff in there, like maybe charcoal or something. Maybe it's some kind of charcoal filter. Hmm. Very interesting. Okay. Okay, here's one last thing, and it looks like it is a handle, probably for this crazy looking guy down here. This uh, water receiver guy. Take a look. Actually, let's just. There we go. Let's just jump out of the way. Where did my razor blade go? I guess I don't need it. What's inside of here? So it looks like two different parts that are actually zip tied together. And I did not bring my dikes up, so I'm going to need to get some dikes to take these apart. Okay, here we go. One of my favorite tools a pair of dikes. And they're good for cutting zip ties, which is one of my other favorite kinds of tools. Oh, yes. Look at that. Ooh. It looks like there are actually two bands. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Okay, I see. Probably go, one goes around the top and one goes around the bottom. And they screw onto this handle guy. Holy cow. I'm going to assume this is still out of the way. We'll try working on our little coffee pot thing here. Okay, so here is our coffee pot thing. And I think I'm going to take this top off while I work on it. It looks like these bands, these bands are actually pretty thin. Oh gosh, a little bit thinner than what I like, but like I said, this is the middle of the road one. So here we go, we got our tabs here. Take a look at that, okay, there we go. So so it looks like I bent them around backwards because they were, twi um, how do I say, I don't want to say twisted, but they were uh, 
I don't want to say folded either, but they were bent around the other way. So I bent them backwards so that these tabs stick out. And it looks like um, our, let me put this guy down. So you've got some screws on this guy. I'm going to take these screws off like so. There's one on both sides of the handle. Okay. Nut and screw there. There's a screw. And here is the nut. And let me um, take our band here and wrap it around like so. And we'll stick our handle. See, it's even got a little groove there where these rounded metal straps will fit in there. And we can stick our screw, looks like through that hole, through the band, through the hole in the plastic handle, and out the other side. And we can take our nut and stick her on like so. Oh, come on. Hmm. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, there we go. And thread our nut onto there. Very cool. And I'll do the other band again. See, it's kind of bent in this direction. I'll just bend it the opposite way and bring it around. Let's go down here a little bit. And again, there we go. See, we got our band, and there's a hole right there. And we can take our screw and stick it right through there. And stick it through the band, through the handle. This handle's definitely plastic. And then uh, hopefully through the other side over here, like so. And we'll get our nut in place. And get this thing all screwed together. Probably if you have a screwdriver, you want to probably tighten it up a little bit more than what I'm doing here with my fingers. Because fingers can only get things so tight. And that's usually not good enough. <laughs> but it would be good enough to demonstrate this right now. Okay. And then maybe we will stick our top back on. And there we go. We have a thing that's kind of like a coffee pot or something that we can stick under the output of our distilling machine. Let's get our chunk out of the way. Very cool, huh? Okay, I'll have to read the directions and see what those other parts are for. Okay, I've been reading over the directions a little bit more. It appears that this uh, this part, at least, I'm not sure where this other part goes. Maybe that's to cap it off if you don't want junk getting in your water. But this part goes up here so that the water can kind of come out of the nozzle and be funneled. Make sure steam or whatever doesn't escape. I don't know. And uh, so that part goes on top of the coffee receiver thing. Or not coffee receiver, a uh, thing that looks like a coffee pot receiver water receiver part and here is the top of our the, the condenser of our distiller unit and um, actually I'm gonna unplug it from this guy because I'm gonna have to fill it up with water in a second but let's uh, so this guy is actually some kind of filter I guess that is supposed to be a carbon filter that goes in here and helps filter the water maybe as it comes through this guy and uh, this part here is supposed to come off somehow Really? It is supposed to come off, and that glass thing is supposed to go inside of there. Gosh, how does this come off? Let's say push. Okay, so I guess we push on this guy. Oh, come on. Oh. There we go. So we push on that, and that pops off. And uh, okay, so this is a spout. It says it's 304 stainless. So hopefully this will last for a while. So there's our spout from our condenser in there. And we're going to take our glass thingamabob. Remember, I'm an engineer, so 
I should be able to put this puzzle together. There. Okay. And I guess we uh, snap it back in the place. Like so. Without breaking the glass, hopefully. Oh, look at that. So there's our glass output. And... Oh, very cool. Okay, let me unplug it from the wall, and I guess there is supposed to be a fill line. Yes, it says fill right up to there. So let's take her over to the sink, and we will fill this thing up. Oh, look at that. You can see me in my crazy cowboy hat. Okay. Of course, I may have to clean out the sink. Oh, come on. Okay, so here's our distillation unit, and we'll put her into the sink, and we'll fill her up to the fill line. So we're putting our toxic fluorine water in here that the uh, local government provides for us to turn us into zombies. So we believe all these lies that they tell us. So I try not to drink the fluorine, so we'll try to not poison ourselves as much as they'd like us to. Okay. There we go. There's the full line. Let's see how heavy this is. Okay, so again, we have our condenser, and we'll put this on top of here. See, there's the water, and wanna, it's got some kind of rubber seals that I don't know how good they are, but see, there's like two fins that go around. Well, we'll see. We'll see how this thing works. I'm going to rotate this a little bit because I want this cord to be plugged into there and uh, again I'll plug this guy in and get him situated we have this little spigot thing here line that up with the glass thing like so so it can funnel right into there and uh, okay so we got our spigot thing all lined up like so Okay, there we go. So it looks like we're about ready to go. And here is our plug. I'm going to plug that into the wall. And yeah, let's take a look here. Holy crap, this thing starts up all by itself. Okay, there's an on-off button. So I guess you can turn that on or off. And I was reading the directions a little bit. And it says that the reset button is merely to start the device and not to turn it on or off but it looks like it started all by itself already anyway so we'll see how this thing operates should be very cool okay I guess we'll see the noises there's a fan up here drawing air through the condenser See any water coming out yet? That should be cool. It does start coming out. Okay, I can tell you right now that this thing takes a lot more time. It's been running for quite a while and I haven't seen any results yet uh, to make fresh water than the reverse osmosis does over there. Right. And this one, this one will make this much water in probably like 10 minutes or so. I'm gonna guess this is gonna take hours to boil all that water and then recondense it. So let's just tighten up these screws while I'm waiting. 
I may have to go to bed. I don't know, we'll see. Okay. I'm gonna have to grab it with the other hand to tighten them. So we'll see. Is there any water coming through yet? Okay, just out of curiosity, because I'm getting tired, it's been like well, 15 minutes or so. I'm just curious what's going on inside of here. Let's take a look down there. Looks like it's starting to boil, maybe. It took a long time to boil all that water in there, though, I think. Very cool, huh? So let's let this thing run for a while. We'll see how that works out. Okay. Okay, so it's about six o'clock. I know to start this thing going. And we will see how long this thing takes to do something. Okay. okay, it's about okay, it's about 6.30 now. It's been running for about a half an hour. And this thing's getting a little bit warm to the touch. I'm not seeing any any water coming out of here yet. Okay, just let it run for a little bit longer. Actually, just started making a gurgling sound like a coffee pot. to the bottom. There we go, it's starting to drip boys. About a half an hour it starts to drip. Starting to pick up a little bit now. Oh, very cool, huh? Okay, so here we go. We're about an hour into the process, and it looks like it's raining on the inside of this container. It's hard to even see in there. Let's take a look. Let's see how much water is coming out. Okay, so there we go. Yeah. 
Alright, cleaning the edges by... Okay, so that's about how much water we have after an hour. Running this thing. Looks like maybe half an inch, maybe an inch in the bottom. Okay. And it's chugging away. Yeah, and this is getting a little bit warm here. Outside of that. Okay, so it is 7.30. We're about an hour into the process. And it looks like it is still going strong here. Look at that. Okay. Let me just clear up the sides for a little bit. Okay, so we have about, what, two, almost three inches of water in there now. So we're doing pretty good. It's taking a very long time though. Okay, it's about 8 o'clock and we're coming up on about two hours of running this thing. And so now we have about three inches of water in there. And it looks like it is still going strong. Okay. Thing. You don't want to break the glass thing. Very cool. Okay, it's about 8.30. So we're coming up on two and a half hours. And we got about, what, four inches of water in there. And looks like it's still dripping. Very cool, huh? Oh, well, this thing is definitely getting hot. Okay, we're approaching 9 o'clock, so this is about three hours of run time. And I think we're getting pretty close to completing this cycle, maybe. It looks like it's still dripping out pretty good. Okay, so we're still running, so I'll let it run a little bit longer and see if we fill that container up all the way. Okay. okay, just out of curiosity on how much power this thing is using, looks like it's using about 727 watts. Okay, and we are coming up on three and a half hours of operation, and I think we're approaching the end of this cycle looks like let's take a look here looks like it's still dripping out water though so we're still running at three and a half hours okay 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 it looks like our device just shut off by itself after four hours and it claims it made about four liters of of water in four hours and so Let's take a look inside of here. Okay. That claims it made about four liters of water in about four hours. Okay, just out of curiosity, I'll take off the top. Maybe this is ouch, not a good idea. Yeah, that's not a good idea to do that. There's lots of steam still coming out of it. Okay, so don't take off the top right away. Okay. We'll let that cool down for a while. Okay, so... Let's just try some of this water and see what it tastes like, because some of the reviews are saying that uh, it tasted kind of metallic. So there we go. I guess the four is okay. Let's take a look here. 
try it and see how it tastes, right? Mm. I think I like the uh, water from the reverse osmosis a little bit better, but it's, it's pretty clear. Maybe a slight metallic taste, but I think they said that you'll taste that when it's new. Okay. Yeah, anyway, here we go. Four liters of water distilled, so it's got all the disgusting, bad stuff, poisonous stuff out of the water, hopefully. And uh, low maintenance machine, high energy cost, but uh, something to clean up your water if you need to. This is Dr. James, and thanks for watching.